Hello and welcome to Cardiology 101. This is Dr. Shiraz and today we are going to discuss a very important concept that is how to differentiate SVT with aberrancy from VT. Because they look similar on ECG paper and it is important to distinguish them for better management. So uh, how do we differentiate uh, VT and SVT with aberrancy is through a criteria called Brugada criteria and it consists of four steps. The first step is absence of an RS complex in all precordial leads. So two important things here. First is precordial leads that are V1 to V6 and then is absence of RS complexes. What is RS complexes? You know, uh, in normal ECG, one wave goes up and other goes down. R wave goes up and S waves goes down. But in the case of VT, there will always be either a positive deflection or a negative deflection. So either we will have an R wave or we will have an S wave. So if there is absence of RS complex, then that is definitely a VT. So if there is absence of RS complex, then it would be VT. If it is not, then we go to the next step because as you will understand this, that SVT with aberrancy is a diagnosis of exclusion. We exclude on four steps and if we cannot prove that this is VT, then we call it SVT with aberrancy. So our next step is R to S interval should be more than 100 milliseconds. So what is 100 milliseconds? It is equal to 2.5 small blocks. All right, because one small block is equal to 0.04 second or 40 milliseconds. All right. So if we if we take the distance from the origin of R wave to the peak of S wave, also called the nadal of S wave. It is called uh, it, the distance between these two should be less than 100 millisecond. If it is more than 100 millisecond, then again it is VT. All right. But if it's not, then we go to the next step. That is our atrioventricular dissociation. What is atrioventricular dissociation? It is a type of rhythm in which the uh, AV node and the ventricles are conducting their impulse on their own. So for example, uh, we will have our P waves coming at their own pace and then the ventricular rhythms coming in their own pace. There will be no association between these two. So if there is atrioventricular dissociation, then we call it VT. And if there is no atrioventricular dissociation, we go to the next step. That is that the morphology of V1 to V6, we are talking about precordial leads, okay? So the morphology criteria for VT should be getting fulfilled. If it is getting fulfilled, it would be VT. If it is not, then we will call it SVT with aberrancy. So what is the criteria for, uh, what is the criteria of morphology for VT? Well, it should not resemble any bundle branch block. We will discuss what is bundle branch block in the next lectures. But for now, just remember that it should not be left bundle branch block or right bundle branch block. Our axis should be northwest. Axis pointing towards northwest. Our AVR should be positive. If it is that, then it is again VT. If it is not, then that is our SVT with aberrancy. So we went through four steps discussing each part of the ECG from V1 to V6. And if we cannot prove that this is VT, then we say that this is SVT with aberrancy. Uh, you can take screenshot of this criteria and remember this because you will need this in emergency cases. Uh, so we are going to discuss some ECGs discussing both these concepts. I hope you will understand this easily. So this is our first ECG. So I will ask here that can you see that this ECG is going up in one direction and going down and then ending on isoelectric line? You cannot. You can say that it is either going upward or it is going downwards. You can take one of these. In this case, this is going downwards. All right, so these are S complexes. All right, these are bunch of S complexes. There is no R wave. So on the very first step, we discuss if there is no R S complex, then it would be VT. So this one is VT. Next up, we have another ECG. Uh, just looking at it, I realize that both one and AVF are pointing downwards. So this is our northwest axis. So you should keep that in mind. Then we are going to talk about V1 to V6. So if you notice here, if you notice here, we start seeing some of R waves and then S waves. 
here's a little r wave and then the ecg is going downwards these are rs complexes so the presence of rs complexes says that on our first step this is not vt we go to our next step the our next step was the distance between the origin of r wave to the nadal of s wave should be less than 2.5 small blocks so if i look at uh, precordial leads and i zoom in here i will realize that this actually is less than 2.5 small blocks so our second step proves that this is not vt what about the third step our third step said that there should be av dissociation so there should be av dissociation if there would be av dissociation then it would be vt so looking at this picture i will say that i cannot identify a p wave all right i cannot identify a p wave but by close inspection i will see that in v1 there are p waves actually there are p waves and they are coming after t wave and they are conducting at their own impulse sometimes they are captured between the qrs complexes here and there but i cannot find any association between p wave and the qrs complexes so there is our av dissociation so on the third step on our third step we realize that this is actually a vt so so close to being a v, uh, svt with aberrancy but on the third step of brugada criteria we realize that this one is our vt the other clue to this picture is our northwest axis all right how do we say it is a northwest axis because one and lead avf both are pointing downwards extremely bad axis our northwest axis or extreme axis deviation all right so this one is our vt not svt with aberrancy what about this ecg so if i look at uh, v1 to v6 there are some rs complexes we see an r wave and then an s wave there is no concordance here neither our positive concordance or negative concordance we can say these are our rs complexes because we have both r wave and our s wave so our first step or our first criteria says that this one is not vt what about the next step next step says that our uh, the distance between r wave to the peak point of the s wave should be less than 2.5 small blocks you should go ahead and check this one zoom in and check this one is definitely less than 2.5 small blocks you can see that here from here to here it is less than 2.5 small blocks so our second criteria is saying that this one is not vt what about the third criteria well our third criteria says that uh, there should be av dissociation can you find a p wave in here i cannot find a p wave here there is only ventricular activity so i will say there is no av dissociation p waves or qrs complexes are not coming at different paces actually there is no presence of a definite p wave here so on our third step we say that this one is not vt what about the last step that says the morphology of the bundle branch block should not look like vt so if i look at this uh, if we look at axis v uh, lead one is pointing downwards but lead avf is pointing upwards all right so this is our right axis deviation because this is my right hand if you didn't watch the lecture of axis i should compel you to go to that lecture and watch that completely and understand it because axis is going to be very helpful in these cases in these rhythms and uh, arrhythmias all right so this is right axis deviation then if we look at v1 and v6 this is sort of a right bundle branch block morphology so this is svt with aberrancy we discussed that aberrancy is present when there is some bundle branch block all right conduction is not fair so we went through all the criteria to differentiate vt from svt with aberrancy and at the final step we can declare that this ecg is of svt with aberrancy all right what about this picture all right so if we look at v1 to v6 we will see that there is small r wave appearing here in the v2 
V3, V4, V5, and V6. So there is no concordance here. All right. If all the complexes look like this from V1 to V6, we will say that these are negatively concordant ECG because all the QRS complexes are pointing downwards and there is no upstroke. Up, there is no upstroke at all. But in this case, we are seeing our R waves pointing upwards and then there is S wave. So in our first criteria, this one has RS complexes. So this one is not VT. But about the second criteria that says that our distance from R wave to S wave should be less than 2.5 small blocks. So if I look closely, this is almost 1.5 small blocks. So less than 2.5 small blocks. This again is not VT. What about AV dissociation? Can you see P wave here? I cannot see a single P wave in here, so I cannot say there is AV dissociation. All right, but about the fourth criteria, that is morphology of VT. Does this picture look like VT to you? No, it does not look like VT because in VT we discussed that there would be concordance, there would be extreme axis deviation, there would be uh, no bundle branch block kind of morphology. This is not the morphology of VT. So we will say that this one is our SVT with evidence C. Again, another ECG. What about axis here? Can anybody answer the axis of this ECG in the comments down below? And I will tell you if you're right or wrong. So look at lead one and lead AVF and tell me the axis in the comments right now. Uh, so look at lead one and lead AVF and tell me what is the axis of this ECG. So now on to our precordial leads. So look at from V1 to V6 and tell me, are they all pointing towards the same direction? No, they are not. V1 is pointing downwards. And then from V3 to V6, we have positively or upside uh, pointing QRS complexes. So, and here we have our R wave and S wave. Similarly, R wave prominent here. So these are our RS complexes. So on our first step, this is not VT. So our next step is calculating the distance between the origin of R wave to the peak of S wave and it is it is definitely less than 2.5 small blocks. You can calculate by zooming on to this ECG. Third step is AV dissociation. There is no AV dissociation. I, I cannot find a P wave in here. What about the morphology of VT? No, it does not look like the morphology of uh, VT. So we will call this our SVT with aberrancy. I hope this cleared your concept of SVT with aberrancy. If you have any questions, you should comment down below. I will be happy to answer them. Next up, we will have a very important discussion that is of bundle branch blocks because they are the most common pathological findings in emergency department. Most or, uh, older patients with ischemia or other pathology of heart presents with either left bundle branch block or right bundle branch block or fascicular blocks. So uh, next lecture is going to be very important. You should not miss it. And I will see you in a while. Thank you.